Let's look at current, Ohm's law, and power. First, current is defined as the amount of charge, Q, per time, T. The unit for charge is a coulomb. The unit for time will be seconds, and a coulomb per second is the unit for current, coulomb per second, which is also known as an amp, or an ampere, or just simply A, because of the work done by Andre Marie Ampere. Let's look at an example where we have 20 coulombs of charge pass a point in four seconds. What is the current? Well, current is charge per time. Our charge is 20 coulombs in four seconds, which would give us five coulombs per second or five amps. I'm gonna use a capital A for the amp. Now let's look at Ohm's law. George Simon Ohm conducted an experiment where he changes the, the potential difference applied to a particular material and measured the current. He got a nice straight regression for many of the materials he tested. And if I use that slope is equal to rise over run, then I could write that V is equal to the slope times I, or the current. He defined this slope as being the resistance, which is like a measure of how much friction is in a circuit. So the resistance tells me how how much friction there is in the wire or how much how difficult it is for the electrons to flow so if we write this ohm o h m the unit for resistance um, if we abbreviated it with a o it looks like a zero so we don't use an o or a zero we use an omega this is a Greek letter that we use as a symbol for the unit ohm, and ohm is the unit for resistance. So Ohm's law is V equals IR, where V measured in volts is our electric potential difference, or the voltage. This was first created by Alessandro Volta, first instance of a constant charge source. The I represents current, and current is named for Andre Marie Ampere, so in amps. R is our resistance, and it is measured in ohms for George Simon Ohm, and we use the symbol Omega for it, where we use a V for volts, an A for amps, and an Omega for Ohm. So this allows us to determine the current given a particular voltage and resistance, or the resistance of a circuit based on the voltage and the current. So it's a really helpful equation to use when you're trying to determine um, these values for a circuit. So what is the resistance of a circuit if the current is measured to be two amps and the voltage is six volts? So in this case, we have V equals IR. We have the current, that's the I, and we have the voltage, that's the six volts there. And so six will equal two times R. So six divided by two is R. So R would be three 
ohms. Now just like before when we studied power in mechanics, power is the amount of energy transferred in a particular amount of time. Now energy, remember, is measured in joules, that's the unit. And a volt is actually a joule per coulomb. It tells us how much energy per charge we will have due to this particular battery. So if we take um, our current, which is coulombs per second, and we multiply them by each other, we would have joules per coulomb times coulombs per second. If we multiply those, our coulombs will cancel out and we'll be left with joules per second. And if you remember, of course, time is measured in seconds, so power is measured in joules per second. So that means for electrical power, we can write our equation as power is equal to I times V. So our power is still measured in watts. And remember, a watt is um, still the joule per second. So power, and we're going to be measured in watts, which is a joule per second. Um, this I is our current. And current is going to be still measured in amps. And this V is our voltage also known as potential difference, and it's measured in V for volts. So let's see how we could apply this power equation. So let's say we have a nine volt battery connected in a circuit, um, and that the current in that circuit is measured to be four amps. Um, how much power is used by the circuit while the battery is connected? Now think about every time you replace batteries, in a device, you are um, having to replace them because all the energy that was stored in the batteries has been used by the device. So when your phone needs recharging, it means that all of the energy that was stored in the battery previously has been converted to uh, light or sound, or maybe even your phone feels warm after you've used it. Um, so the phone or even vibrations because you know sometimes your phone may be on vibrate so the energy stored in the battery can be transferred out of the battery to other forms so in this case we're looking at the power and p equals i v and so we've got a current of four amps and we're going to multiply it by this nine volt battery so our power would be 36 watts. Now since the power is a measure of energy per time, that's why uh, LEDs are considered to be such a power saver or an energy efficient uh, way to light a room or um, your phone or television and because those LEDs use such a small amount of energy per time. And so the watts are very low, thus using less energy, and using less energy is always a good thing. So we've looked at how current and resistance and power can be calculated using the relationship of current being charge per time, voltage being current times resistance, and power being current times voltage.